In this video, we're going to be learning about how to find perimeter, circumference, and area for different shapes. So make sure you pause the video and take some time to answer this warm up. Now let's go over how to find the perimeter and area for different shapes. So first off is a square. So as we know, a square has four right angles and four sides that are the same length. Let's call each side S. So each of these sides is S. Then in for our perimeter, we add up all the sides. So side plus side plus side plus side. So that means our perimeter is 4S. And our area is length times width. In this case, length times width is S times S. Or our area is S squared. For a triangle... Let's draw a triangle that's a little lopsided, just so you can see. Let's see. If we have our base and then we have our two other sides, let's say A and C, we also have our height of our triangle. So draw a line that's kind of perpendicular to the base and let's call that our height. Then our perimeter, we add up all the sides, is A plus B plus C. In our area, is going to be one half the base times the height, which we can rewrite as one half BH or base times height divided by two. Any of those formulas will work. For rectangles, remember we have our four sides that are perpendicular. These two sides are the same and these two sides are the same. And so we have our base and our height. So our perimeter, if this is also our base and this is also our height, is base plus base plus height plus height, which is two times the base plus two times the height. And our area is just base times height. Last up, circles are a little bit different. So for a circle, we have a radius. Instead of calling it a perimeter, we call it circumference. So our circumference is 2 pi r. And if you remember, the diameter is twice the radius, or 2 r, so we can also say this is pi d. Our area is pi r squared. So let's try a few examples. We need to find the perimeter. Maybe this is like a frame, a picture frame. We need to figure out what this entire length is in this entire height. So what I would do is I'd say I'd go across. Well, we go from 4 to 16. Oh, that was a little big. Let's say we go from 4 to 16 to 4. That goes the same length across as this. So what is 4 plus 16 plus 4? Well, that's 24. And down the side, we go from 4 to 22 to 4. Well, what's 4 plus 22 plus 4? That's 30. So then our perimeter, since this is a rectangle, is 2 times 24 plus 2 times 30. Which if you do the math out for that, that's 108 units. And we're going to be try, try to be careful to include units on a lot of these, um, just so we're really specific. Next up, we have our circle. It's really helpful if we can find our radius. So if our diameter is 16, our radius is going to be half of that, so 8 meters. Now our circumference is 2 pi r, which is 2 times pi times 8, which we can either leave as 16 pi meters, or we can go on our calculator and multiply 16 by pi or 16 times 3.14 and get, this is approximately 50.3 meters. Our area is pi r squared or pi times eight squared. Eight squared is eight times eight, which is 64. So this is 64 pi meters squared because area we use units squared or if we take 
64 times 3.14. This is approximately equal to 201.1 meters squared. Now, our next problem says you're designing a poster that will be three yards wide and eight feet high. How much paper do you need to make the poster? Give your answer in square feet. So this is really important where we need to pay attention to how we want to give our units. It says it's eight feet high by three yards. A lot of people make the mistake of just multiplying eight by three, but notice this is in yards. So let's change it to feet. If there's three feet in a yard, then three yards is nine feet. So now we're ready to say our area is eight times nine or 72 feet squared. So you always wanna make sure you're multiplying things with the same units. Now, let's try to figure out this one. So all of these tick marks mean that all of these are three centimeters. So let's go ahead and label three, 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 three. Now let's figure out, we have our other one, nine. So this is also nine. We need to figure out our area. So our area, it's not easy to figure out from here. So let's try to chunk this up into shapes that we know. Well, this first rectangle is a three by nine. So three times nine is 27. This square is a three by three, which is nine. And finally, this side right here, since it's three plus three would be six. So three times six is 18. And for our area, we can add up our smaller areas to get 54 centimeters squared. So you wanna just chunk it down into shapes that you know. The same thing for this next problem. These are four and the bottom is 12. Well, I can see this as a triangle sitting on top of a rectangle. This triangle, we know it's four. We had to figure out this base. Well, if this is four and the whole thing is 12, this base has to be eight. And our area is one half base times height or one half four times eight which will give us 16 feet squared. Our rectangle is a four by 12, and the area is base times height, which is four times 12, which is 48 feet squared. So to find the total, we just add them up. 16 plus 48 will give us 64 feet squared. All right, this last problem is a little bit tricky. So you might think that you may be able to go and break things up and figure out what each side is, but we actually don't have enough information for that. But what I do know is if I measure this side is A. So if I take my pen and go all the way down, that's A. Now let's look at what we have. We have this, 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 plus this. Do you see how, how all those blue lines also add to A? So we can make this, we have an A and we have another A. Now I have two C's, so I'm gonna add two C's in. And finally, let's check out what we have going on with B. If I can go all the way across, that's a B. So let's see if we can make it all the way across with these. And we can. So we got another B. So B plus B. So our final answer is 2A plus 2B plus 2C.